Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. I feel like after Rex Week, it's just, it's anticlimactic. To say welcome to the Whiskey Vault? It's just anything we say. Oh yeah. It's just all, wah wah. All right, we're back. We're back and we're drinking a gift whiskey. Gift Again. whiskey. This one from Corey Malkin. Corey Malkin, you magnificent. What was it? It's been so long. I think it was, uh... It's been a distant memory. Mass asshole? Ass Jerk? Punk ass bitch. Bastard. So this I feel is like I feel stone. like we've had a Grange Stone, have we? We have, and we really didn't like it. Okay. Um, I'm going to go on record, and I told Corey this, so I don't feel bad. Um, Grange Stone is Total Wine's private labeling, like Trader Joe's has theirs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Kirkland's has theirs. This sure. is a Total Wine, as far as I know. Yeah. I've heard it's a Total Wine thing. Sure. Now, um, this one specifically. Maybe better because it's at least double casked, whatever that means for them. Mm -hmm. um, but it is a Highland, and everyone seems. My problem with most of the grain stones is they're bland. What is double cask? It's rum yeah. cask. Rum cask finish. What does double cask mean? Is it rum cask finish? Yeah. Then that's what makes it double cask. So that means it starts in bourbon casks, and at the end is finished in a rum cask. <sighs> Let's find out what it tastes like. Well, now no one knows where this is coming from. Oh yeah, this is sweet and candy. What? Okay, so my um, so Grainstone never tells you where they're getting their whiskey from, so we have no idea what distillery this is. I wouldn't say candy though. You're not getting some. I am getting some sort of burny, yeah. fumey notes. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. almost feels like just a little too. It almost feels like that sort of fumey note you get from pure grain alcohol, where it's really sharp and. No, I'm getting sh a sharp, grainy. It's not smoky, but it's directionally getting that kind of acidic. It smells like. A campfire, but yeah, and the campfire, but you've poured water on it and it's been sitting overnight. Yeah. Oh, it tastes like that too. What? But with, but with um, grapes, <laughs> but with a purple grape, and it's sort of dry. Makes my mouth feel a little dry. So this isn't one note. There's actually a few. No, notes. there's a few notes. No, no, they're no. not great notes, <laughs> but well, but there are a few notes. Subjectively, they're not great notes. I think there's a lot of people who would like that kind of sweetness. Combined with this kind of wet used campfire is a really not helpful. It sort of vaguely reminds me of for a while I spent a lot of time in Corvallis, mm -hmm. Oregon, and it's just down the way from a paper mill. I think it's and a paper mill when the wind blows right, it's not a great smell. Nah, you're giving this you're giving this too uh, too hard of a time. I think the I think it's barrel char that I'm getting. Barrel char, because it's not peat. No, the smoke isn't really quite it. This is the blacky bits inside the barrel. Oh, uh, vanilla wafer. Yeah, vanilla wafers, like in the box, like you use to make banana pudding. Hmm. I can see that on the back end, especially. Yeah, very vanilla. It's, um, here's the thing. If I was already three whiskeys deep and hanging out with friends and, and we said, let's move to the Grangestone, yeah. I would be absolutely fine with that. And smoking a cigar, I bet it would go good with a cigar. Yeah, so you're not blown away, but this is not unenjoyable. No, no, no. I enjoy it, but it would be the one that I... That, so remember my rule at home? Yeah. One fancy pour, then switch to the budget whiskey? Sure. This would be my budget line. I don't remember the other Grangestone very well, but I think I'm going to... Can we compare? I don't remember where it is, because okay. I also didn't really prefer it. Bobby Parnell. A while ago, I posted a story that Rex read about my 84-year-old neighbor, Bill, who for found it. Oh, yeah. For six years, brought a cheap bottle. Yeah, remember that guy? A bourbon to my house, drank my premium malts, and left us with... Uh, I'm left with his still unopened bourbon. Well, that bottle of Old Crow has finally been opened. Last week, Bill passed away. Hmm. And after we laid him to rest this week, his son and I broke open that bottle to share a glass. We ended up it? we ended up killing it was a bottle of Old Crow. All right. Ended up killing most of the bottle up to the day he died. He still worked his pasture, enjoyed our whiskey, and lived his life entirely on his own terms. That seems pretty damn good to me. Thank you for sharing that, Bobby. It sounds like he was a magnificent bastard. 
Sorry to see him go. Bobby. What's the neighbor's name? To Bobby Parnell's neighbor. Bill. To Mr. Old Crow. Bill. All right. Here's to Bill, and here's to Bobby. Cheers. Cheers. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. What is this? Old, Old Crow. Crow. Nice. All right. I'm just saying. I would have took it home too. All right, so which was the grain stone? This is the new one. I just get rid of your old crow so it's not confusing things. Down here. Okay, that's the new 21 year old grain stone that we tried last time. Actually, I like this one better now. Do I remember you? disliking it. Now there's more wood notes in this one. Sweet and thin. Yeah. This has more character. The one. Uh, well, this one is thicker. It's more viscous, and which to me is all the sugar from probably the rum cask. Yeah, I think you're turned off from the sweetness of the rum cask in this. Yeah, it, it is, reminds me of cough syrup. It's pretty damn sweet. But this comes across as fewer notes and thinner. It does come across thinner, but it also comes across as more wood notes. Mm. And you know I like the wood notes. I think there is a dire need for the people. We're back to the people. <laughs> to understand... In the final episode of Rex, oh. <laughs> if, by the way, you didn't watch that to the end because it was too painful, you left off in a dark place. Yeah, you did. You need to watch it. You really need end. to finish it. Yes, yes, you will feel very sad if you <laughs> didn't get all the way through that. Um, the whiskey that the dark mooch made you pl uh, mm -hmm. pour with like all these different with things. About $7,000 worth of bottling. Yes. Yeah. Did we put ice and Diet Coke in that blend? No. There was a stunt whiskey! We had a stunt whiskey. You want to meet the stunt whiskey? <laughs> we're not we're not that insane. But we did, I mean, some people, it's bad enough to even blend those whiskeys. Meet the stunt whiskey! <laughs> Evan Williams. Evan Williams. Evan Williams got treated very, very badly. Yeah. <laughs> he got tons of ice and Diet Coke and, uh... The, no, we actually did have a large pour of that fancy no, no, whiskey, we, so we distributed it. Yeah, like the people, and we shared it. The people that were here helping us shoot. Yeah, guess who got a little bit of it? Chad. Chad, Chad got a little bit of it. All right. Don't feel bad for Chad. <laughs> um, I think it would, it would be interesting for us to go back and do a review. Oh, of that blend? Yeah, that's so moochy. <laughs> <laughs> well, but you know what? I totally agree because. Um, we're the people. After we finished that whole four hour damn shoot that took us till 11.30 that Why night. So, uh, <laughs> after we finished that long shoot, we actually did take that. I'd put a lid on that so it wouldn't evaporate. And Rex and I split the rest of it and sat here. And I just remember thinking, damn, this is a good whiskey. <laughs> With all of those pours into it, it turned right. out pretty magnificent. So, I would absolutely pour it again. Yeah. So that we can review it on the show. And I'll tell you the proportions. Yeah. And yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it was super good, but even... Yeah, you'll never be able to create it. <laughs> unless you have five, seven thousand dollars. And a lot of people, like, you know, co uh, ice and coke, you would never do that in a million years. The fact that we even blended those kinds of whiskeys, that's yeah, bad enough. That's yeah. pretty shocking. You know what, it's, it's, it's meant to be enjoyed. Yeah, well, the thing is, if we, when you, someone has a vault like this, they should be willing to take the risks that you can't afford to take. And so, we're willing to do that kind of stuff. All right. Erbergum. Erbergum. 95. 95. Does anyone remember when this channel was about whiskey? No. Yeah, I don't either. <laughs> I think there was a really short window when I was by myself at a desk over here yeah. that I talked about whiskey. But the, then there was the first day I introduced you to Rex. And that was, <laughs> Come on, that was one week out of 52, people. Kidding. One week out of 52. <laughs> yeah, they got no patience. Let me have some fun here. People have no patience. <laughs> 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 a couple of questions about the last episode of Mooch Week. The lighting looked weird because we're shooting that in the middle of the night. Mm -hmm. He was shooting classes, I had a bunch of scheduling conflicts, so the only time we could shoot that was in the middle of the damn night. Yeah, it was. Same. And the reason why I look shiny is because I was wearing long sleeve shirt and a <laughs> bathrobe. <laughs> <laughs> and it was not cold in here. For like 90 minutes. In a warm room. Yeah. So it was sweat. And it wasn't green screen, it just looks weird because we almost always have daylight coming through here. Yeah. But I'm glad everybody, I'm glad most people <laughs> enjoyed Rex Lee. Most people. Yes, most people yeah. enjoyed Rex Lee. All right, well, here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight, may you fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal a lover's heart. If you drink, may, may you, you drink, drink with us. us.
Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw in a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.